Um, as you were told before, I'm a marine biologist and photographer and I'm involved with the Whangateau Harbour Care Group up past Walkworth. If uh, you don't know where that is, you're about to find out. And um, just uh, the Harbour Care Group uh, last year launched a photographic exhibition which is shown several places including the um, the uh, elephant house at the zoo, <laughs> great venue there and basically it was promoting the natural beauty and natural values of the Whangateau Harbour and some of the images I'll show you tonight are from that exhibition. We also at the same time launched um, what we call a 10 point plan, we're very passionate about trying to look after this little estuary well into the future and it's good to see that the Regional Council has uh, taken more interest in this estuary in the last year or so and they're um, working on a plan for the catchment at the moment. So uh, we'll get on with the show, thank you. Thanks Luca. The Whangateau Harbour is a small estuary on the east coast out from Walkworth on the way to Lee, still in good ecological condition compared with other mainland estuaries in the Auckland region. Because of its small catchment, with housing development only on low-lying sandy soils, there is little silt runoff into the estuary. The southern arm of the harbour has a rich mosaic of salt marsh and seagrass habitats and is flanked by the Omaha Tanico Wetland Scientific Reserve, with a world acclaimed example of an unbroken succession, succession from coastal forest to estuarine vegetation. In contrast to the muddy estuaries close to Auckland, sand flats in the upper harbour are clean and firm and easy to walk on. They provide extensive feeding areas for the rare New Zealand dotterel, which breeds on the end of Omaha Spit, where they struggle against predators like cats, rats, and hedgehogs and disturbance by people and dogs. Mangrove areas in the estuary are great for kayaking in shallow water when the tide is in. There is a maze of passages through the mangroves where you can see dense beds of necklace weed and schools of mullet zipping around in the clear water. Because of the small amount of silt entering the harbour and because of the vast numbers of shellfish which filter the harbour water for food, the water is often amazingly clear and a safe area for families snorkelling in the shallows. Few New Zealand estuaries offer such opportunities for snorkelling amongst the mangroves. The estuary has many millions of cockles and is known for the best cockle resource in the Auckland region. The beds have recently been closed for three years because in summer 2009, 80% of the cockles died from infection by two diseases. It is hoped the, the closure will give the shellfish a chance to recover and to maintain their ecological role in keeping the waters healthy. Whangateau is a popular place to snorkel and learn about estuarine ecology. Here a bed of necklace weed is attached to a sandstone ledge next to a channel behind Horseshoe Island. The Whangateau Harbour Care Group is promoting a 50 hectare area as a fish haven for the enjoyment and education of school and community groups. The Nicholas Weed Bed is a very important nursery for Parori. Whangateau supplies most of the Parori on the coast from Parkery to Kauau. The channel is also a nursery for juvenile snapper and for large numbers of spotties. Juvenile trevally also occur in the, cha in the channel a school of around 200 living there in summer. Such an easy access estuarine area for snorkelling in lovely clear water is very rare and, a well, and well worth looking after as a no fishing zone. With the policy of no fishing around Horseshoe Island and the adjacent channel, we could expect a dramatic increase in the numbers of several fish. Flounder are fascinating to see, well camouflaged on the sand and sometimes among the aerial roots of mangroves. If you approach very carefully, sometimes you can get really close and personal with flounder. <laughs> this one allowed me within 10 centimetres of its face, my twin flashes producing an eerie green reflection in the eyes. Presently you may see one or two flounder if you snorkel here, but protection would increase numbers and enhance the snorkel experience. A strange fish in the harbour 
is the stargazer. It is an ambush predator lurking below the sand surface. If a crab or small fish comes close, the stargazer lunges forward and swallows the prey in one gulp. A few quick wriggles and the fish disappears again below the sand. Yellow eye mullet, often called sprats, are common in the estuary where they form an important link between the harbour and the open coast by providing food for larger predators such as kawai and kingfish. Mullets feed in shallow water and schools of juveniles are often seen in summer sheltering among the branches of mangroves. The mangroves themselves are fun to snorkel around. We have one species in New Zealand, common in the northern half of the North Island. Mangroves are specialised trees which can live in salt water. They have peg-like breathing roots which stick up out of the sand or mud around the base of the trees. Mangroves are important in many ways. They provide shelter for juvenile fish and their fallen leaves are consumed by fungi and bacteria at the beginning of the estuarine food chain. Mangroves spread by dropping green propagules on the water. That's the green patches you can see in that photo. Which float around for a few days, then sink. If near the upper shore, they put down roots very quickly. They soon grow into small seedlings which are alternately inundated and exposed by the tides. If silt gets into the estuary because of poor management of the catchment, some of the silt is trapped by mangroves and encourages further mangrove expansion. This is the mangrove's response to human abuses of the catchment, nature trying to repair the damage. Large, old, established mangroves help protect the shoreline from erosion, but also serve as a hard attachment surface for filter-feeding oysters, barnacles and small mussels, which help clean the water and keep the estuary healthy. Thousands of juvenile pororis settle from their planktonic larval phase into the mangroves. Only 20 millimetres long, they quickly develop the stripes typical of the adults. When the tide drops, they move into shallow channels, return, returning to the mangroves when the tide rises. Some local landowners owners are upset that mangroves are spreading in front of their properties. Recently, 40-year-old mangroves have been chainsawed illegally. The Auckland Regional Council has a new policy recognising the value of mangroves but also their potential nuisance. Permits can be obtained for pulling seedlings and limited removal of mature trees. The Whangatiao Harbour Care Group continues to promote the natural values of this amazing estuary and to seek better long-term environmental outcomes by working with councils and the local community. For more information, see our website, www.whangatiaoharbour.org. Thank you. Thank you.